Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. My name is Carrie Tessier, and uh, I'll be presenting to you about parallels of perception. I have made an observation about our universe and the parallels within it. Our perceptions of everything we see and how we understand shape our reality. Perceptions are based on our environment, experiences, beliefs, mood, and observations. If our perceptions can change, then so can our reality. Understanding this is the first step to furthering our universal understanding. Can we reverse engineer our observations of reality to perception and, then, and therefore reshape our reality? To answer this, we must consider a number of concepts together. For example, superposition. Superposition is a principle of quantum theory, which describes a challenging concept about the nature and behavior of matter and forces at the subatomic level. The principle of superposition claims that while we, do know, while we do not know what the state of any object is, it is actually in all possible states simultaneously, as long as we don't look to check. It is the measurement itself which causes an object to be limited to a single possibility through our perception. Video cameras, are <laughs> Video cameras can show this concept by the fact that they don't just record things. They change what they record simply by being there. Take the atom. Atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons make up the nucleus, and the electrons move around outside the nucleus. Traditionally, we believed that they orbited the, like the planets of our solar system. However, they don't actually... Or, yeah, traditionally we believe that they orbited like the planets of our solar system. However, electrons don't really move around the nucleus. They pop in and out of existence around the nucleus in what's called an electron cloud. They exist in one spot, then poof. They disappear and reappear in another spot. The question is, where do they go? If the electron pops in and out of existence, wherever it goes, it's still an electron. One theory is that it goes from an atom in this dimension to an atom of another dimension. An electron is an electron regardless of what dimension it's in. And electrons are contained in everything. The movement of electrons is what creates electricity. If it goes from a hydrogen atom in this dimension to a hydrogen atom in another dimension, it will exist in the same state of matter. However, if it goes from a hydrogen atom to a gold atom, it has changed its state of matter, but is still the same electron. The electron is the same and different simultaneously. It's only a matter of perspective. There are things in this universe that seem unrelated from one perspective, but if you look at them in the right way, can actually be almost identical. They are parallels of each other because they look the same, just exist on a different scale. Things on a small scale can resemble and possibly function exactly the same as a completely different entity on a larger size scale. It is the observer's perspective that will change the meaning of the object. Look at the cross section of an animal cell. It has a nucleus at its center, an outer membrane, and complex processes within it. Now, look at the planet Earth. It has a core, an outer crust, and it also has complex processes within it. Let's move to a neuron. <laughs> when magnified under a microscope, we can observe the structure within its function. Its function is to essentially transmit single signals of thought. The structure of a brain neuron resembles the structure of the universe. With clusters and galaxies, Clusters of galaxies and dark matter contained within it. <laughs> One is only micrometers wide, the other is billions of light years across. Together they suggest the surprisingly similar patterns found in vastly different natural phenomena. Is a neuron within our brain a parallel of the structure of the universe within a larger entity? Meaning, do we exist inside a gigantic brain? So therefore, does the universe think? We know that humans think, and we don't fully understand it yet. 
that's okay. We're thinking anyways, and that's the point of interest. We think for many different reasons and in many different ways. There is one way of thinking that has served us well through our evolution as a species, which brought us out of caves to create a civilization and kept us alive. Inventive thinking frequently involves combining concepts or elements from different realms that would normally not be put together. Sometimes inventors disregard the boundaries between Sometimes inventors disregard the boundaries between distinctly separate territories or fields. Some of our greatest inventions have come from disregarding accepted explanations of why the things they are for an outside the box interpretation and also the mimicking of nature. For example, the conch shell. For example, the conch shell. Its structure has been used to design a more efficient marine propeller. The conch shell has a structure within it called a Fibonacci spiral and is the most efficient shape we know of to move water and was created by nature. The same spiral is also responsible for the distinct acoustic sound when it's used as a horn. The conch shell and propeller are parallels of each other. Someone chose Someone chose to look at the conch shell from a different perspective and use this concept in order to create a better propeller. Another example that is being used to mimic nature is understanding the function and structure of the human brain. What we learn is being used to create robotic brains. The human brain is still the most powerful computer in existence that we know of. As we learn no more, the knowledge will be used to create possibly another life form. We live in amazing time our greatest achievement will be found through striving to understand and emulate the greatness of the natural universe. It is the original inventor and the only balanced self-sustaining system that we can observe. It has taught us about superposition with infinite scale and possibilities contained within it. It is the one thing, it is one thing and many things simultaneously. Just like without the cells in your body, there would be no body. And without the body, there would be no cell. One planet full of individuals, separate and connected. Imagine the possibilities if we all work together. <laughs>